Well, I got a very special unboxing here tonight, and no, it is not Piper the Cat, and if she usually likes to join me on the unboxing videos, but she's been a little absent lately, so I'm happy to see that she's back here to help me, because we have a really cool model here on the table tonight, and this is the, the E-Flight um, V22 Osprey VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. So it's, um, you know, part helicopter, part airplane, which is the whole reason why it exists. Um, if you think about the, um, the the kind of the origins of the Osprey, and I remember reading about this. My uh, my dad's retired Air Force, so we had Air Force magazine. So as a kid, I remember seeing like the like pictures of this prototype thing, and it was like the coolest thing. You know, it's half helicopter and, and half airplane, um, and that's exactly what they were looking for with the V twenty two Osprey. They're looking for something that had the vertical takeoff and landing capability of a helicopter, so you can get into tight places, you can hover. It's fantastic for search and rescue, uh, troop deployment, um, fast reaction, special operations. I mean, you name it, the V-22 should be exactly what you need because it's got that, that vertical takeoff and landing capability of a helicopter. It can get in places a fixed wing can't go. But one of the problems with a helicopter is, compared to a fixed wing, it's not nearly as fast. But it makes it a little bit more vulnerable um, on the ground, plus it takes longer to get anywhere. So the solution was the V-22 Osprey. Um, so it takes both the best aspects of helicopter and the best aspects of a fixed wing airplane and puts them together as one. Of course, that also makes it incredibly complicated to fly in real life. Um, but thankfully, Horizons worked on a flight controller system in this that really helps with that. The, the transition between what is considered like helicopter mode to, to airplane mode is, is more automated. It has a flight control system on board that helps with that. It's a flip of a switch and the engine nacelles uh, will rotate. So it will go from helicopter mode to, uh, to airplane mode. And there's an intermediate mode in between that kind of offers um, kind of like safe a little bit where it's like, uh, it's kind of like a stability mode. So it limits the, uh, the motion of the, uh, the aircraft um, in both pitch roll and yaw. And then of course there's like the full aerobatic version so you can kind of do all sorts of crazy stuff. So without going much further into that, let's go ahead and let's get this thing out of the box. We got Waffles here, who's helping me out. And uh, I tell you, whenever you get a new box from Horizon, the cats go nuts because it's like a whole new playpen for them. So the, the shipping box is on the ground, so you're gonna probably hear that just as you did there. That's Piper jumping in and out of it. So uh, they absolutely love when we get a new box from, from Horizon. So let's go ahead and, um, and get this thing out, shall we? All right, so we move that out of the way here. Um, Waffles is gonna jump down. She's not interested in joining us anymore. So let's take a look at what's in the box here. So here we go, we got the, uh, the, the cover off here and you can see we have um, multiple uh, decals that, um, that you can pick from. It's not just limited to the, uh, the one scheme. You got a, a Navy scheme, Army, Army, uh, yeah, Navy, Army, US Air Force uh, scheme here. So you got a couple different options on how you want to um, to kind of make your own your own V22. You can personalize it. I think that's pretty cool. I love to personalize my own airplanes. I like to give them custom paint scheme, custom decals. I mean, I'm pretty much on the on email with Kelly every time a box comes in from Horizon on a new plane. I'm already got a, a graphic request out to Kelly. So here, they kind of give you some options right away. You can kind of change your scheme up however you want, um, right right out of the box, which I think is pretty cool. I think this is. The B25, uh, UMX B25 had the same thing. You could actually customize it to any one of the Doolittle Raiders, and I always thought that was so cool. So it's great to see that thing coming back. So let's go ahead and kind of just separate some of this stuff out. I'm gonna get Waffles away from the tripod because she's making it look like uh, we're in uh, an earthquake at the moment. So, oh, there she goes. So she's out of here. So hopefully the camera will now be a little bit more stable. She was messing around there. So let's go ahead, um, we got a little little knife here uh, so we can kind of cut some of this this uh, tape away. If you remember from my other video, as I always say, you want to get this tape out of here as, as quick as you can. And you don't want to let it touch the, um, the airplane because it can um, damage the, the paint surface. So let's go ahead and pull this. All right, so the tape's out of the way. Here's the, uh, the decal sheet. You can see a little bit clearer now. So you have uh, full color and low vis on national insignias. Uh, we got some uh, green and white um, decals. I imagine that's probably going to be for where the uh, for the props go. Uh, we got some tail tail art. It's not really nose art; it goes on the tail. Some tail art here. Uh, we got checkers. Got some claws. Uh, the Joker, aces and eights. We got a couple options here, plus as many uh, different numbers. So you can kind of customize whatever you want. And of course, 
if you decide not to use these, uh, there's actually a lot of um, V22 schemes that are out there that you can choose from. Uh, you know, actually, the next version of Marine One uh, looks to be a V22 Osprey. It looks like that's what they're they're practicing with, or at least they're getting ready. So it's going to have that that dark green scheme with the uh, the white band on it that says United States of America um, for the for the president to use. Very cool looking plane. It's not a military scheme. It's it's a U.S. government scheme, but it still looks very cool in that. I've seen some guys do uh, Coast Guard schemes. Um, to my knowledge, the U.S. Coast Guard doesn't use the V-22, but the V-22 looks pretty darn cool in the white U.S. Coast Guard with the uh, that orange, orangish red and blue stripe on it. So, and of course, uh, you could also do a U.S. Air Force Special Ops. Uh, they have a very unique V-22 Osprey that's kind of a really, really dark, like a gunship gray um, on top and the light gray on the bottom. And they got all sorts of cool stuff hanging off theirs because they have a Special Ops one, so they get all the cool, cool gadgets. So. Uh, you're not just limited to these, of course. You can be creative and you kind of come up with whatever you want on top of these. But it's cool that Horizon gives you the option here to pick and choose what you want. So we're going to kind of move these out of the way. Uh, next up is the, uh, the instruction sheet. This is going to be important. This is a very unique airplane for me. Um, it doesn't fly like a regular plane that I normally fly. You know, I fly a lot of warbirds, general aviation planes. This is not one of those. Uh, this is going to be a little different, so I'm going to definitely want to pay attention to the manual here, read it over very carefully, have a good understanding of the, how to set the airplane up, and what's, what's involved in the different modes and what do they do. Um, this one, because it is a unique airplane, you really do need to spend a little bit extra time. To be honest, how much time would I spend like setting up another 1.2 meter P-51? Probably not a lot. I set up a couple already, I probably wouldn't even open the manual up. Not necessarily the best thing to do, but I'm just being honest. I will be looking at this manual. This is a unique airplane. Um, it's not one that you just want to get out of the box, throw a battery in and go fly it. Um, I think you're going to run into some problems. At least I know I will run into problems with it. So uh, the instruction manual is going to become very important. And of course, these are available online as well. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I will actually review the, the manual in PDF form from Horizon Hobby's website before I even get the airplane. So while it's in transit, I'm already familiar with it. So just a pretty good idea to become familiar with the, the manual. Uh, next up, we got a little supplement uh, guide here. Unfortunately, a big chunk of it uh, was ripped out, but um, it appears that that is the uh, the French version of the manual is missing a chunk of the tape caught it. Uh, but that's not a problem. I can't read French anyway, so I guess it's not going to be an issue. In fact, um, it looks like all right. There is one. There is an English version in here. I thought maybe it was just a second language uh, supplement, but there is an English version. So. Uh, you do want to make sure you read this because it does talk about what to do before the first flight of your V-22 Osprey. So you're going to want to review that. I know I will. It goes in, it talks about multi-rotor mode, um, which uh, has the uh, kind of what I consider helicopter mode. The, the engines are pointed straight up. And as you move the controls, the, uh, the engines will tilt. Uh, the nasals will tilt forward and back, or one will tilt one way and the other way. That's how you can uh, rotate the aircraft around. So that's in multi-rotor mode multi-rotor mode uh, then there's transition airplane mode in which it's that half halfway in between and then airplane mode is kind of where it ends up is the uh, the kind of the other flying mode um, that you can have here so it's going to be important to read this uh, there's a lot of very important notes on here concerning uh, the servos uh, how to adjust things fine tuning yeah the word important shows up a lot in the supplement so probably important that you read it over as well. All right, enough with all the uh, the manual talk and all that stuff. Let's get to the cool part, which is, of course, the unboxing, getting it out of the box. So as usual, Horizon does an awesome job packaging. Uh, they got these really nice foam pads in here um, that really help protect the airplane. And all right, I'm gonna lie, this thing's pretty cool. This is the first time I've seen it here. Uh, so yeah, when you see me doing one of my unboxing videos, it is uh, the first time me actually seeing it. So uh, the smile on my face is is what you get when you actually see it. So uh, landing gear are here. Looks like we got some um, Velcro for the uh, for the battery. Pull this out of the way here. Uh, extra set of uh, propeller blades. Looks like they poked through the plastic a little bit. Uh, extra set of blades is probably going to be a really good idea for someone uh, learning to fly one of these. Probably going to pick up a couple more of these. 
Got some protective uh, plastic here around the fuselage, but I think at this point, let's see, it's in here pretty good. So I'll show you guys a little bit. I'm gonna turn it around here so you guys can see the box a little better. Um, it's in here actually pretty good. Uh, the, the spinners here are in within this foam area here to really protect it. Um, so I think I'm actually gonna cut this area out. It's just taped in and I'm just gonna cut it and move it out. That way I can kind of lift the airplane out straight up. But you can see it's very well protected uh, here from Horizons. So let's go ahead and uh, cut those out of the way. Now, should lift straight out, and it does. Let's get the, uh, the plastic off of it here. Got to be very careful with everything. There's a lot of little moving bits on this plane. And of course, it's, it's so much different than um, than any other plane that I've ever that I've ever had. I've never had a um, some anything like this before. So yeah, here we go. All right, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. <laughs> and here we go. Here is the V twenty two Osprey from E Flight. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'm not gonna lie. It's totally cool. Um, it it looks actually, in my opinion, it looks cooler uh, than the pictures show. It looks cooler in person than what you see. Um, on the videos, this thing is, um, yeah, take a look at this thing. It, that thing is just, it's cool looking. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one. I've wanted this one for a while. Um, it's, it's not going to be an easy one for me to fly. However, you know what? This is what I just learned. Real Flight 9.5, the latest version that just came out here in October, 2020 has the V-22 Osprey is one of the brand new airplanes that you could fly. So uh, as you can guess, I've been flying the, uh, the V-22 Osprey a lot in real flight. And from what I can tell, um, I'm actually, uh, it seems to do okay in uh, what I consider like helicopter mode. So when the engines are in the straight up position, um, I'm really working on practicing the ability to, uh, to take off, to hover, to rotate the aircraft and kind of move it around. It's a totally different discipline than flying a fixed wing airplane. And for me, it's taking a little bit of retraining in my brain to figure out just how to get this thing to move around. I'm terrible at flying quads. For people looking like, I've seen people like they get a quad out of a box, they can fly and they have no trouble. I get, I get it in it and I, I screw it all up. I just don't have, for whatever reason, it doesn't connect with me on how to fly a quad. I had trouble with helicopters, even like quadcopters, a little bit of a trouble with that. Um, I'm doing better in the simulator with this than I do with, um, either a multi-rotor or a, uh, a helicopter in, in real flight. So I think that's giving me a little bit of confidence to give it a shot. I think what helps me is that it looks like a real aircraft. And so it, it has the something that I can orientate properly and I know which direction it's, it's pointing. And I think that's gonna make a big difference for me. It's got a tail rotor in the back here, which will help um, kind of lift the aircraft up in the back here, which should give it a lot more stability in terms of how it reacts in um, in helicopter mode. I believe this actually shuts off in um, in airplane mode. I don't know if it actually does anything or not once you're in airplane mode, which is the configuration you are in now. Uh, landing gear are off on it right now, which is primarily how I, I'll fly mine um, once I get used to it. Uh, that's how I will go because they look cooler without the landing gear on it. Uh, battery hatch. Uh, just a uh, magnetic uh, battery hatch. This does take a, um, a JST wire. And what's interesting is this is actually 3S powered. It takes an 800 milliamp uh, 30C 3S. I thought it was 2S. Um, so I actually had to order some batteries for it because I thought it was like a UMX and it uses the, uh, the what, the 280 2S that all my planes fly. Well, that's not the case. Um, it's got a hookup here for, um, for FPV right from the factory, which I think is totally cool. Um, I don't do any FPV flying, but I think this is a fantastic platform for those that do. Um, so yeah, uh, overall, the foam is a little bit different than what I'm used to. It's um, It's got a little bit more uh, texture to it. Um, you don't really see it all that much. You know, if I hold it out here, it kind of disappears, but up close under the light here, it's got a little bit more texture to the foam than um, I'm used to for most of my um, Horizon planes. 
but it doesn't really detract from from the appearance of it like i said if you hold it out arm length um it really starts to uh to disappear so yeah uh it's cool i'm not gonna lie this thing's pretty cool so it's gonna be a little bit of a, of a learning curve to get be used to how to fly the uh, the v22 osprey uh, i'm gonna start with just being able to put it into a uh, into a hover kind of rotate the aircraft around move it around and maybe see if i can just kind of maintain like maybe like a five or a ten foot square area in the yard um, and maybe just do nothing more than that to get started when you are in airplane mode, and I've learned this uh, from reading a lot of the reviews, and I've learned this from Real Flight 9.5, you want to keep the power up. Um, this has quite a bit of weight to it. it; doesn't even have a battery in it yet. But for such a small aircraft, this thing weighs quite a bit more than like one of my regular UMX planes. I mean, the wingspan isn't all that much bigger than like my P51, or uh, probably even less. I think it's less than my Timber, um, but it it has a significant more weight to it. So. With that said, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you keep your power up. Uh, from what I've learned in the flight sim, I would say anything from uh, about 70% eh, about power is about the cutoff for where you wanna be in um, in airplane mode. Anything less than that, um, it starts to get a, a, a little twitchy. And if you go into a turn with, uh, with anything less than about 60% throttle, um, there's a good chance that um, it's gonna go down. So just be aware of that um, when we're flying it. I know I'm gonna be mentally thinking about that because that's so much different than one of my normal flying airplanes. When I wanna to try to bring it in for landing, stop bringing the power back. I cruise at 50% power. I have to get used to the fact that this is going to cruise much, much faster with more throttle than I am used to. And I have to retrain myself to get used to that. Um, otherwise in hover mode, um, it looks to be like it's, it's fairly controllable um, to be able to keep the airplane kind of in a, in a small area, at least on the simulator, I'm gonna try the exact same thing with the real one and see how they, they compare and contrast. So next step up for me is actually to get the manual out, read the manual, learn how to set up the controller. They say it's really easy um, and knowing Horizon, I'm sure they're right. I, I have no doubt about it that the setup is probably way easier than I'm thinking it's going to be. So I'll get the, get the aircraft bound, get it set up, of course, I gotta wait for a battery to get here before I can bind it. But as soon as I get a battery for it, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing um, set up and ready. But yeah, overall, very cool plane. It's been out for a little over, I think about a year or so now, um, but it's cool. Um, it's definitely cool. It's on, uh, the price has come down on, on Horizon on this thing since introduction. And uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a cool plane. It's unique. It's not something that everybody's gonna have. You're probably gonna be the only one at the flying field with one of these things. It's small enough so I can, hovered around my backyard. I plan to fly it over the pond and in hover mode when I get much, much better with it. It's a little, probably too fast to fly in the yard. Like uh, like my UMX planes, you can fly them, fly them in my backyard all the time. Uh, don't have any issues. I have a feeling this is probably gonna be a little too quick for a confined area. This will be something that in airplane mode, I'll take to the, uh, the club field and fly it. But uh, yeah, uh, overall, uh, it's cool. It's very cool. I'm, I'm very excited for it. I've wanted one of these and now I have my V22 Osprey. So uh, I'll do my very best to answer as many questions as I can. I'm going to be as much of a newbie as anybody would uh, when they first get this aircraft. So bear with me. I will do the best I can to answer any questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Um, if I can't answer them, I'll at least try to point you in the right direction on where you can find the answers. But um, I'm going to go... Uh, Grab the manual here and um, start uh, start reading it over and, and get this thing ready to fly.